Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, greetings, people of God. Um, this is going to be a topic that is not easy to understand. At least for those who are spiritual babes, um, I just pray that God is going to give me the grace to make you people understand um, on the revelation and the revelation the Lord gave me and the understanding um, on who He is. And what is going on with his bride and the way the Lord is seeing his bride right now. So, yeah, I'm going to wait until everything <laughs> gets ready. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, I ask you for your mercy and I ask you to give me the grace to explain to your people and to take my time, Jesus, the way you have dropped those things in my spirit. So, I don't know even how to really um, name this topic this very thing but the fact you know um we know that our lord jesus christ is alive right but according to um what we are rem remembering you know um the resurrection of the lord and and you know being mindful of the things that he has done for us and that he has been um, sacrificing himself and that he died for us. So this separation from at that time from his disciples and from the church um, was very much dropped in my spirit when I was watching um, something about the death of the brain and the damage of the brain so this is how this came that it was downloaded in my spirit on what happens to his bride when there is a separation from the head so I'm going to share those things with you and I pray that God will give me the grace again to bring those things forth that he want me to speak about because it is not easy uh, to get this kind of understanding and things to be dropped in my spirit. Um, and I do understand that it is not always and sometimes of course it is mysterious the way the Lord speaks. But by his spirit, he's able to give us understanding. So I'm going to take my time, people of God, because honestly, I asked the Lord many times and I didn't even really know on how to, yeah, how to name this thing, you know. It is not easy, but with God's spirit, it's going to be still easy in Jesus' name. So I hope that you can hear me and that everything is fine. I'm going to just start. Um, before I go into any explanation on the brain death and what it means to be clinical dead from the brain and explain what this has to do with us and especially with the Lord Jesus, how he dropped in my spirit. 
I want to share a vision with you and I'm going to go with you into scriptures on the Lord wants me to speak about his bride. So I'm trying not to use the word church because truly, truly the church is not the bride. So Jesus is coming for his bride, not for his church. I'm going to say and, and I'm going to show you why his bride. Thank you, Holy Father. Now, before the Lord gave me the understanding concerning the brain, death, and what that means, and what this has to do with us, or um, the function with the body, He gave me a vision um, on His bride, and He showed me different brides and bright dresses. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to talk about this today all. I'm going to see how the Holy Spirit leads me. Now, the Lord gave me different pictures of bridal dresses. And some were, you know, very acceptable. Some were very luxurious, very even not really decent. Um, transparent and all of that but before he explained this to me I immediately knew what this really means because just yesterday I came across some bridal dresses I didn't even know what for but today the Lord showed me this in the vision again different bridal brides and bride dresses so in our own eyes, all those bridal dresses might look good and, you know, just um, sexy, if you will, and very, you know, according to our own flesh, looks good and looks good on us and all of this. But it is not the way the Lord sees the bride. So in the vision, he showed me also a glorious bride, but somehow that the bride had some stains of blood sprinkled on her it looks also not really good but there was also a bride he showed me when he showed me again when the gate opened and again i'm coming back to the gates and it is on the heart of the father to speak about his bride and that gate opened and there was a majestic, beautiful, I mean, beautiful, glorious bride standing in the front of that gate. So this was the vision. We do know that the Lord is coming for his bride according to his word. We do know for a blameless and spotless bride. But unfortunately, until now, the bride is not ready, which he also wants me to talk about the wedding feast. So I'm going to take it one by one, by God's grace. And I ask him, Lord, what are you showing me? And why are you showing me all this? And what do you want me to talk about and release unto your people he brought back to me isaiah chapter 50 which he wanted me to read with you and the reason why he sees the bride like that why so i'm gonna go to Isaiah chapter 50 with your people and I pray that you can follow me I know it's not easy to understand but just follow the Spirit of God will help us to understand I'm coming to the explanation thank you father 
Now, when the Lord showed me those different bridal dresses in the vision, this is how the Lord sees, sees them. They are estranged. They are not really acceptable unto Him. This might look beautiful in our eyes, but it is not acceptable unto the Lord. You see? And He reminded me on Isaiah chapter 50. That saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? And I'm coming to the word separation when I'm going into the explanation of the brain death and the head of being separated from the body and the body as well from the, from the head. Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. So he was talking here to the children of Israel. Wherefore, when I came, there was no man. When I called, was there none to answer. Is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water and dieth for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I'm coming to the blackness. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. Thank you, Father. Now we know that the death, death of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is explained in Matthew chapter 27, and I'm coming to the blackness, to the darkness, to that death of the head and that separation, what it looks like really for the bride. We know according to Matthew chapter 27, when we read from 45, what happened, that there was darkness that took place, it is written. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And in verse 51, 50, Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So at that moment, Jesus was separated. He was separated. He gave up the ghost from his disciple. And we do also know, I'm not going to go into everything now, but we do also know when the Lord was preparing his disciples um, in John chapter um, 16, he was telling them and giving them the promise, right? That at that time, they will be not able to ask in his name. But whatsoever they would ask in the name of the Father, they would receive. 
So the Lord was preparing them. Even if we read the previous chapters, we know and we will find out the Lord asked them also a question um, until now when I sent you without a purse and without stuff and all of that. Have you lacked anything? And they said, no, Lord. But he said, from now on, take it. Why? Because the Lord knew that he's going. They would be for that moment uh, left alone. But yet he gave them the promise that he will not leave them as orphans. But sent the comforter. But still they were separated for those three days, right? Until the resurrection. Where am I going with this? I pray that you are able to follow me. That separation, that darkness, that death, that caused that separation. We know this. But today, spiritually speaking, and this is where the Lord is displeased. Even though alive, even though resurrected, there is still some separation. And we know that he is the bridegroom. And we are his bride according to Ephesians chapter 5. But I wanted, to, first of all, for you to understand that how the Lord sees the bride, the picture that she has been defiled and polluted. And that the Lord himself is like a divorcement, a separation from the bride. Now, the bride is not the church. How do I know? There is a definition that we know when, when we read that in Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to take you, please be patient one by one. It's not easy to understand. I don't want to jump everywhere, but in order for you to understand what I'm talking about, I have to take you to the scriptures. So to show you, that what Apostle Paul was talking about is a mystery. We know according to Ephesians chapter 5, 23, that he's talking about the bride of Christ. And that word church here, and even according to Matthew 16, 18, where he says that upon this rock, I will build my church in Greek is translated as ecclesia. Ecclesia, in, in this sense and meaning, I'm, I, I, I'm going to give you the definition by God's grace, which is not really easy to understand. But that word ecclesia there, okay, I'm not finding it anymore anyway. But that word ecclesia there is not such as building um, uh, the things that we know today, but it was meant as um, assembly, as gathering. So the gathering is important. The gathering of whom? The members. Why? Because we're the members of the body of Christ. So Ecclesia is the assembly. Why and how do I know? If we read Hebrews chapter 10, 25, we are admonished not to give up our assembly, our gathering. Our gathering. So this is what is, this word Ecclesia means there, but it is translated as church. What in the world is going on here? But it is translated as church. I think I have to off this thing. Sorry. It's making noises. <laughs> I don't know why. So I'm taking you really one by one. I know it sounds complicated, but by God's grace, follow. So our bridegroom is the king of kings, the Lord Jesus himself. He's coming for his bride. As we know, in Ephesians chapter 23, 
for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, of the ecclesia, meaning of the assembling, of the gathering, of the members of the body of Christ. So Jesus, but this is another topic, is not coming for the church, he's coming for his bride. It's important to understand who his bride is. The bride is not the church. Because if you see all around the world what kind and form of churches we do have today, they are not the bride of Christ. How do I know? I know it according to the word of the Lord. If we read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12 and 27, we know that the body is, has different members. Right? Different members, but yet one body. And that body is of Christ. I have no time to go into all scriptures. I'm just giving you some understanding. So Apostle Paul is talking here about the bride of Christ in 27, that he might present it to him self, a self-glorious church. But it is here indeed the bride. He's talking about why? How do I know? Because he's comparing it here with a wife. You see? And many religious spirits do not understand the mystery that Apostle Paul is talking here about. He's talking here about the bride of Christ, the church as such, but as members of the body, the bride. That he might represent it to himself a glorious church, glorious bride, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is why we do have set people, gifts of God as apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors over the, in the body of Christ for the perfecting of the saints according to Ephesians chapter 4, 13 and 14 of the unity of faith. We are not yet there. There is no unity. You see, there is no unity. So this is why it was shown to me in the vision that there are different bridles, but yet not acceptable unto the Lord. Every bride came to represent herself unto him, but either she was not decent or polluted or naked, half naked, you know, transparent and all of that. But yet the Lord showed me in the gate, and only the gate will open unto a glorious bride that is without spot and wrinkle. So the Lord is not pleased with his bride. He is not. So another scripture for you to know that the Lord is the bridegroom and we are his bride is John chapter 3, 29, where he's talking about that the bridegroom, uh, uh, that the members or his disciples, where they have been challenged by the Pharisees or rather by the disciples uh, of John, why they are not fasting. And he said it very clear. As long as the bridegroom is with them, they have no need to fast. But when the bridegroom is taken away, then they will fast. So we can find this in John chapter 3, 29, Mark chapter 2, 19 and 20, Matthew chapter 9, 15, Luke chapter 5, 34 and 35. So it's talking about when the groom is taken away. He is our bridegroom and we are his bride. The members of his body and he is the head of the bride. So I'm coming now to the head. Thank you, Holy Father. So before I go any further, I'm going back to um, Isaiah chapter 26, uh, 28, pardon me, where my eyes also went. But I want you now 
to give you the definition now of the how it came the brain death and what this really means right jesus was separated he gave up the ghost right he was separated there was darkness and everything was simply no no longer lively so and this is how it is also today even though the lord is alive but there is a separation why we read it in isaiah chapter 50 that there is a separation because of the iniquities of each and every one before i go any further to explain what that really means i want you to understand the cost of brain death or what this really means to be having brain death so i'm just gonna take it from wikipedia even though there is another very clinical uh, very powerful uh, explanation or definition um but it will be too complicated or too deep. Now, brain death. Brain death is the permanent, irreversible and complete loss of brain function, which may include cessation of involuntary activity necessary to sustain life. It differs from persistent vegetative state in which the person is alive and some autonomic and here it comes some autonomic functions remain it is also distinct from comas as long as some brain and bodily activity and function remain and it is also not the same as the condition locked in syndrome so i'm not going any further Now, the brain death, which controls everything, that controls the functionality of our, our body, what causes brain death is the damage whereby there is no longer a blood circulation or oxygen. I'm trying this in my nurse language medical language to make it very simple easy to understand so if there is no oxygen and no transfer and transportation of blood circulation transport of oxygen the brain dies but for a short while it is possible that the body can still function while the brain is dead. And the body can be supported to function without the brain with life support. And this is the fact when the, the brain is dead functionally, and they begin to support it with life supports and machines and all of that to keep it functioning, the blood circulation, but it can still not happening forever because there will also be a cause of complete dysfunction and dead of the body as well and their organs. But they keep it alive so that they can trans, um, take it, some organs take it out to transplant, make it ready for the transplant. And oftentimes, this is the case when the, the patients of brain death, their brain is dead, then they do that to keep it, the, the other body parts and organs alive on life support. But it cannot happen for a long time. It must everything happen quickly. 
but it is also vice versa the fact that the body or cardiac arrest can or stopping of breathing can also cause brain death because there is no circulation and if there's no trans transfer transportation of oxygen and the blood can cause also brain damage and brain death so both is possible the damage from the brain can cause of course finally the death of the body but even if something is in the body that causes the disruption of blood circulation can also cause brain death now for those who have ears to hear spiritually i'm going to explain to you how this spiritually is to be understood in the body of christ only those who have ears to hear they will hear me by the spirit of god on what that means when the brain is dead the head is dead like for example i just mentioned when our lord jesus gave out the breath right the ghost he was dead he was separated so therefore he was separated from his disciples but praise god he is not dead he's alive but there is still a cause that can happen to separate us from the lord from the head the body can still be separated from the head and the head can be separated from the body. I hope you can follow me. Why is it the fact that this can happen, even though our Lord Jesus has redeemed us and, you know, he is alive? Can this truly happen? Yes, it can. Why? Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 28. It's just a reminder. I have already ministered on this. But this is where my eyes went on when the Lord gave me Isaiah chapter 50. That there is a divorce. There is a separation. That's what, what divorce is all about. Because of the iniquities. And these are the iniquities that causes this. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory. And for a diadem of, diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. And for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment. And for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. Here it is. They turn the battle to the gate. Here we are again. A gate. They turn the battle to the gate. And that's the Lord. Verse 7, but they also have erred through wine and through strong drink and are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Imagine, there is no place clean. For whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make understand doctrine? Then that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So this is why I said it is not easy to understand this mystery and this comparison when it comes to the separation from the head and from the body. From the dead of the brain or the dead of the body that can cause separation from the brain. Why is there a separation? Because of the defilement, the pollution, and the iniquity of his people. A 
and the bride of Christ is so defiled. You have heard me this ministering when I spoke about the bride that is sinking in the mud. And also where I said that the bride is dismembered because everyone is lusting and taking whatever he likes. That doctrine, that body part he's lusting after. And I spoke also about the abomination and perversion and the mixing and mingling of his bride. And this is why she is separated from the head, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. He is the head of the bride. He is the bridegroom who is coming for his bride. But right now his bride is separated from him. There is darkness covering her. And I have also ministered already, if you remember people of God, where I said she is such a glorious bride. So much power, so much beauty, wonderful ornaments on her, which speaks of the glorious gift and power given by God unto her. And yet she is covered. And this is the darkness, the blackness and covering I just read to us according to Isaiah chapter 50 verse 3. The Lord at that time gave the children of God or the Israelites, he gave them a bill of divorce. He spoke to them of thy mother. So there is a separation. But how can this be? A prophet royal, the Lord came, he died, you know, he redeemed his bride and all of that. How come the Lord, the head, is separated from the body, from the bride? It is not the Lord that is separated. The head is still there and is functioning. But it is the body that has been separating itself from the head, from the Lord. Now, the reason why I gave you the understanding of damage or, or the death of the brain, but also as well the body, vice versa, the body that can cause brain damage or death, Remember what I taught us when I spoke about uh, Romans chapter 8, that it is the spirit that gives life. But the carnal mind is death. That simple. So if you see those men and those people and churches functioning, Still is because they are on life support and they are not able to function properly and not really any longer because they are separated from the head. That is a damage because of the things that they are doing that is causing the body, spiritually speaking, death, separation. The Lord is no longer with them. So how come Prophet Royal, the body of Christ, is so powerful and still functioning, still moving in the gifts and the power? Well, it is possible as long as the blood, and here it comes, the blood, and what is important is the oxygen on, in circulation in circulation but this does not mean that it is the head who is doing it i hope you can follow me people of god it is not the head that is doing the circulation to keep it alive to keep it going as you are wondering and asking yourself 
How are these people still flowing in the anointing? How are they still doing all that stuff? How is it possible? Is it really that the gifts of God that they are talking about and the calling of God is without repentance? Is it really that thing? No, it is not that thing. It is that thing that likes support. That they are giving themselves they are no longer functioning with the head. They are separated from the head. Because their behavior, their attitude, their perversion, their iniquity, their spiritual death has caused damage. They had caused separation from the brain, from the head, which is the Lord, Jesus Christ. So how are they functioning still? Because they are on life support, mechanically, technically, if you will. They keep it going, keep it going. Oh, Holy Ghost fire. Mm, Easter. Mm, celebrate God. Celebrate Jesus. Why well, Jesus is no longer there. Jesus is no longer there. Jesus is separated from them. It is not the Jesus that they are calling up on that is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I am shocked about the definition of Christianity when I looked it up today, what that really means. It's too funny. It blew my mind. It is coming truly from the word, from the word, Latin word and Greek, Christos. But yet, in the definition, they said it is not referring to Christ. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. This is why I'm saying Christianity and church is not the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ are the members of the body. And I said to us, there is no unity. This is why we have the gift given unto the perfection of the saints and to bring it unto the unity of faith. And representing a spotless, blameless bride. Again, that word church there, the ecclesia, it's not meaning church as such. It's meaning and meant assembly, gathering of saints, the saints, the members. That's what it is. Jesus will not come for the church. Jesus will come for his bride. So I don't know really if you people can follow and understand this mysterious, I mean, very deep thing. That's what it is. This is why he gave me that understanding and I understood suddenly. I was, when I got that revelation on how the, how the brain can be dead. As a nurse, I know that. And yet the organs can still function as long as they are technically, me mechanically, on support, life support, and flowing of circulation. But what is the important fact here I want you to understand is the oxygen, is the air, the blood transportation. You see, you can't function without the blood. And that's what it is for the, for the body of Christ, for the bride. You can't function, not the, it's not possible because everything flows from the head. It is the head and the stem of the head that from it, everything flows. All the functioning of the body stems from the brain stem, from the head, from the brain. This is why he is our head. He is the head of the bride. He's the head of the so-called church that you know or understand. He is the one. And the member cannot be separated from the body. It can't. It must be one body of one spirit. We know that. 
as I have just mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 and 27. So we have to be of one spirit, of one body. But without the blood, without the Holy Spirit, the breath, the air, the oxygen, which is the Holy Spirit, that is death. That is death. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And the carnal mind, be carnal minded, is simply death. Being separated from the head is simply death. This is what is happening to the bride of Christ. And the Lord is very much displeased. She is defiled, she is polluted. Just for you to understand, this is what happened when Jesus died. He gave up the ghost. There was a separation between him and his disciples. But he's alive forevermore. But yet, spiritually speaking, there is still death happening. Why? Because the bride, the body of Christ, choose so, choose to be separated from the head. They choose to do their own thing. And this is why they are functioning still, but they are on life support. And this is not going to be for long. Because eventually, not eventually, they will be taken out. They will die. Because you can't function without the head. I hope I could make this understandable, practical, on giving you this understanding on what it means to be, have a brain death. And there are also brain damages. Though connected to the head, yet we have different stages of brain damages like coma. There are some that are in coma. Spiritually speaking, sleepy slumbering. There is no connection at all. They are not awake. But again, the death of, of the brain, not to talk of different stages of, you know, um, brain damages or body damages as well that can cause slowly but lowly, you know, damages to the brain as well meaning disconnections so that's it and this is what is happening so god is coming for his glorious bride each and every one of us the members we are his bride but we must be of one body we must be perfected in unity of faith. We must be of one spirit and be found spotless, blameless, and a bride without wrinkle. So, this is what it is. And there are many factors in the body of Christ that cause damage and separation from the head. This is why Apostle Paul said, this is a mystery, but I'm speaking to the church. He was not speaking really about the submission of wife and all of that, but because of the carnal mind, the religiosity, he used the wife and the submission and the understanding of them in that church, in that time, for them to understand, but he said, yet I'm speaking about the church of the bride. This is why he used the woman as an example. The woman represents the bride. So the church is not the church that you understand that the Lord is coming for. No, no, <laughs> it's his bride. And that's you and that's I, each and every one of us. And we have to make sure that we are not separated from the head. 
We have to make sure that we are not polluted and defiled. And that we are connected to him. And that we allow him that everything that goes from him flows to us. All the instructions, all the move of the Holy Spirit, all the teaching, all the breath, all, all he gives to us, the gifts, everything flows from him. This is why it is written that everything the Holy Ghost gives as he wills. It is not the body dictating the head. It is the head dictating and commanding the, the body. So all those games and gimmicks that you are seeing on pulpits in churches, God has nothing to do with that. They are separated. They are on life support. They are flowing and keeping all that stuff alive because of mechanical, technical support. But Jesus, the head, is not involved. But in a short while, they shall die. They shall no longer be able to function because they are separated from the head. So they are dead because they are carnal minded. So the significance here is the blood. The blood that keeps it going, keeps it moving, keeps it alive through the transportation of oxygen. The oxygen, the very oxygen, the very breath that we are breathing by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why both sides can cause damage. Not that the Lord is dead. No, he is still the head. But it is us as soon as we separate ourselves from him. We are dead. Spiritual speaking, we are dead. Remember the time the Lord said to them when he gave the commandment in the garden you shall not eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you do so, the same day you shall die. It was spiritual death, spiritual separation from the head. That's what it is. So many are spiritual speaking dead. They're separated from the Lord. It's a polluted bride that is trying to function in her own mechanical technical life support and going and the lord is tired of the pollution of the filthiness of he says as we just read that the tables are full of vomit and there is no place that is clean he's tired of the feasts he's tired of the gathering he's tired of the buildings he's tired of the churches he's tired of the evil feasts and crowns and celebrations and all of that so I'm not talking about the church here. I'm talking about the bride that the Lord is interested in. The church as such is going gonna, is gonna to agree and come unto a commitment of, you know, one world religion. That's their church. It has nothing to do with Christ. But we are the members of the body and we are the bride of Christ. Each and every one of us, we are those who are gathered together. This is, we are the saints, the, 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 the assembly of God. The members of the body. So, I pray that has, this has given you some understanding and has blessed you. To give you this kind of, you know, I hope I have forgotten nothing. Let me see this kind of understanding. Yes, there is so much more to this, but I cannot go into this now. I'm going to stop maybe by God's grace tomorrow, if God permits. But um, there is a whole lot more to this when it comes to the bride of Christ and that the Lord is fed up. So, I'm going to see what God is going to speak again concerning this. But, maybe I can just mention it very quickly, which I had all one time I have promised us to give us the scriptures. 
but maybe it's it's too much let me stop right here i'm i'm going to speak about the wedding uh, the wedding feast maybe tomorrow by god's grace if he permits me if he has not another uh, thing on his heart but i think yeah that's that's what it is so this is too much for tonight for now i'm going to speak about the wedding feast and in fact even those who will enter his kingdom and you will be shocked and surprised who will not enter his kingdom who is not going to be his glorious bride to stand before him and to enter into his gate that's it thank you for listening god bless you and listen again to it i know it sounds complicated but you know you you need the spirit of god to understand these mysteries to understand this kind of revelations comparison and all of that and it took me a lot of time to give myself to the lord what are you really saying lord what does this have to do with your bride you know how do you see your bride how is she standing before you right now and i think i have shared now a lot with you so you can go back and listen to it again god bless you and thank you for being right now a part of this and joining me and listening Thank you.